Hello everyone. Information box ticket lifestyles brings you today bacteriology topic on Shigella dysentery. But first don't forget to give a like to this video, subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon button so you don't miss any of my videos. Let's begin with a table of content. First we will have a brief introduction of Shigella dysentery. Then we will go through the pathogenicity of Shigella dysentery which includes Shigellolosis, Hemolytic Uremic Syndrome. Let's first begin with the introduction of Shigella dysentery. Shigella dysentery is a species of gram negative, facultatively anorbic, rod shaped bacteria that is extremely pathogenic and causes severe dysentery. Infection with this organism often leads to ulceration of the intestinal epithelium. It is known to produce an exotoxin, Shiga toxin, which disrupts protein synthesis and produces endothelium damage. The next is pathogenicity of Shigella dysentery. With the help of this dragon, we will understand the pathogenicity. By entering and multiplying in the cells lining the colon, Shigella spread illness. The invasion, intracellular replication, and cell to cell dissemination of the organisms are all mediated by structural gene proteins. These genes are controlled by chromosomal genes while being carried on a large virulence plasmid. Therefore, the plasmid's existence does not guarantee that genes are functioning. They first bind to and infiltrate the M cells present in pia patches rather than differentiating mucosal cells. IPAA, IPAB, IPAC, IPAD are four proteins that are secreted into macrophages and epithelial cells with the help of the type 3 secretion system. These proteins cause the target cell's membrane to repel, allowing the bacteria to engulf. Shigella, in contrast to Salmonella, lies the phagocytic vacuole and multiply in the cytoplasm of the host cell. The bacteria are driven through the cytoplasm to neighboring cells, where cell-to-cell -cell transit takes place, thanks to the reorganization of actin filaments in the host cells. Shigella bacteria are shielded from immune-mediated removal in this way. Shigella causes apoptosis, programmed cell death, to evade phagocytosis. Additionally, interleukin-1 is released during this process, which attracts polymorphonuclear leukocytes to the diseased tissues. As a result, the integrity of the intestinal wall is compromised enabling bacteria to enter deeper epithelial cells. Shiga toxin is an exotoxin produced by Shigella dysentery strain. This toxin, which is made by Shiga toxin producing E. coli, has 1A subunit and 5B subunits. The B subunits help the A subunit enter the cell by binding to a glycolipid GB3 in the host cell. The 60S ribosomal subunits, 28S ribosomal RNA is cut by the A subunit, preventing aminoacyl transfer RNAs from binding and interfering with the protein synthesis. However, in a rare proportion of individuals, the sugar toxins can mediate damage to the glomerular endothelium cells, resulting in renal failure. Damage to the intestinal epithelium is the major sign of toxin activity. Now let's dive into the clinical manifestation of Shigella dysentery. First one is Shigellosis. Shigellosis is characterized by abdominal cramps, diarrhea, fever, bloody stool. One to three days after ingesting the bacteria, the disease clinical signs and symptoms starts to manifest. Within the first 12 hours, Shigella colonizes the small intestine and starts to reproduce. An enterotoxin is a mediator of initial symptoms of infection, which is copious watery diarrhea without histologic evidence of mucosal penetration. However, lower abdominal pains and tenesmus, straining of urinate, 
together with copious amount of pus and blood in the stool are the key symptoms of shigellosis. It happens as a result of bacteria getting within the intestinal mucosa. The feces contains a lot of erythrocytes, mucus and neutrophils. Although antibiotic therapy is advised to lower the risk of subsequent transmission to family members and other contacts, infections are often self-limited. Few people acquire asymptomatic colonization of the organism in the colon, which serve as an ongoing infection reservoir. Last one is hemolytic uremic syndrome. A collection of blood illnesses known as hemolytic uremic syndrome are characterized by low red blood cell counts, acute renal failure, and low platelet counts. After infection with Salgala dysentery type 1, hemolytic uremic syndrome may develop. Children may experience convulsions. The main cause may be a fast rate of temperature rise or metabolic changes linked to the development of Shiga toxin. It has a greater risk of morbidity and death than hemolytic uremic syndrome associated with E. coli and is typically exacerbated by severe diarrhea, intravascular volume deception, and circulatory collapse. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching till the end. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon button. Keep showing your support to this channel. Thank you.